Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unmanned, drone jamming may have violated federal law. The FAA releases statement on UAS detection systems at airports. And Shebel is Norway's pick for UAS deployment in the Arctic. Welcome to Aero News Network's Airborne Unmanned, a weekly news program covering all things unmanned in partnership with AUVSI, the Association for Unmanned Vehicle Systems International. I'm Sophie Herlock. Questions have come up over the use of anti-drone jamming technology during the recent Ultra Music Festival in South Florida. A company called Rational Point, along with its partners Vigilant Drone Defense and Pemica, provided counter UAV services to protect the music festival from unauthorized drones. The company claims they were able to intercept 61 drones during their three days of service. However, jamming drone signals can only legally be performed by government agencies, such as the Department of Homeland Security and the Department of Defense. And Aero News Network has learned there was no temporary flight restrictions covering the festival at the time. The FAA is going to look into this incident and the FCC will likely get involved as well, since the jamming of radio signals falls under their authority. Now let's take a quick look at some of the stories making round of the unmanned vehicle community. It's time for today's Unmanned Minute. The UK CAA is considering a licensing fee for drone owners under a new registration plan. The fee would be set at $21.64 annually for any drone weighing more than 8 ounces. The plan would require registration of drones on a government database, and only people over 18 could register. This would not apply to remote pilots who are licensed to fly unmanned aircraft but do not own them. Researchers from the University of Bristol recently conducted a mapping survey near the Chernobyl nuclear complex and found undiscovered radioactive hotspots in the exclusion zones. The survey was conducted in the Red Forest about 1,640 feet from the Chernobyl plant, and the hotspots were located south of the forest. Dell Air announced Wood has adopted the Dell Air UX11 high-performance UAV for site planning and asset management in mining and quarry projects. The drone will be deployed for high-accuracy 3D topographic surveys and material quantifications for mineral mining in Idaho and Wyoming. More than 500 students have been trained in the use of UAS at the State Preparedness Training Center in New York. Their courses help educate public safety officials and first responders on how to integrate drones into their public safety operations. The Division of Homeland Security and Emergency Services expects to build on this number significantly over the next year and train several hundred more operators by 2020. Now back to the rest of the news. In response to airport safety and security concerns raised by the malicious use of UAS, the FAA will support the safe integration of UAS detection systems into the airport environment by providing important information and working closely with airport operators who are considering or have already installed UAS detection systems on or near their airports. The agency expects to supplement this with additional information related to UAS detection system coordination as the process is refined. The FAA also stated they do not support and prohibit the use of non-federal counter UAS technologies at or around airports as these systems could interfere with aircraft navigation. Norway's Anodia Test Center selected Shebel's Camcopter S100 vertical takeoff and landing UAS for extensive search and rescue trial as part of their Arctic 2030 project. The Camcopter S100 operates continuously for six hours and is able to simultaneously carry multiple payloads. As a VTOL platform, it does not require any additional start or recovery equipment, and its minimal footprint is perfect for offshore patrol vessels with small deck sizes. The S100 can also fly in temperatures as low as negative 40 degrees Celsius. Tests are scheduled to begin this fall. And that wraps up our show for today. Don't forget to subscribe, tweet, and like us. And for more information on the innovative world of all things unmanned, Check out auvsi.org or airborne-unmanned.net. Thanks for watching and have a wonderful day.